you guys so it's been three years as a software engineer at this company and so let me show you guys what they gave me as a token of appreciation So to show their appreciation, they basically just got me this little trophy. I don't even know what it is. I think it's uh, supposed to be like a surfboard or something. It just, you know, simply has the number three company logo and my name at the bottom. But anyways, let me share with you guys how I got to this point working here. Uh, some things I learned while working at Salesforce for the past three years and some of my favorite company perks. So to give you guys some background, my first interest into computer science was actually through a computer science class in high school. To be honest, I was only interested in taking that class because I would rather be in front of a computer rather than, you know, listening to a teacher do a lecture. But I also had a history of playing games on the computer for long hours, so it felt like a comfortable spot for me to be at. But another confession that I have is that I wasn't even good at programming in the first place. I really had to take time to really wrap my head around for loops, classes, if conditions, and things like that but the thing that really kept me going was that it felt rewarding once you know i was able to figure things out and create something on my own and seeing that my program runs is actually pretty rewarding that eventually led me to go to cal poly san luis obispo in central california to study computer science i eventually got my computer science degree in 2021 and in 2022 that's when i actually started this job as a full-time software engineer if I were to give advice to new devs or to myself three years ago, one thing I'd say is to not be afraid to ask questions. When I first started as a software engineer, I was afraid of asking questions. In my head, I'd imagine I'd be that annoying team member who didn't understand what's going on and waste time with all the questions that I had. And so I'd eventually tell myself that I'll just figure it out. But doing this has backfired on me so many times. I couldn't meet the deadline for my assigned work and it had to be pushed back, which didn't look very good on my part. If I had to go back, I would start asking questions earlier rather than later, but just remember to also do some research beforehand. Another thing I'll say is not be so attached to one technology and to always be learning. Coming into this job, I really only knew how to code in Python and I stuck by it. But now I don't remember much of Python and I mainly code in Java and JavaScript. And who knows when I'll be moving on from those languages and learning a new one. Early in my career, I wanted to mainly work on the brains and the magic of software, writing backend server-side code. But for a period of time, my role shifted and I found myself working more on the front-end side. That meant learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that eventually gave me valuable exposure to web development. Being open-minded to picking up new skills has definitely made me a well-rounded developer, experiencing how both the front-end and back-end work. I definitely recommend getting exposure to new technologies and fields first, then focusing on something you're more interested in. And lastly, a big thing I've learned is to not give blind loyalty to a company you're working for. I still remember how excited I was when I first got this job offer. It was definitely a huge milestone and I felt like I owed to the company to put my best foot forward since they chose to hire me over all the other candidates. But after being here for a while, I've really started to understand the reality of this company loyalty thing. I've survived two major layoffs in just three years. I've seen talented, hardworking people just come and go. All that time and energy spent working late hours for the company just to surprise you that your role is cut is a hard pill to swallow. Realizing that I'm just a headcount to the balance sheet, I've grown to see that working for a company, especially for a company this large, is simply a mutual transaction of your time and energy for compensation. And at the end of the day, it's not personal, it's just business. So knowing all of this, I've been more focused on improving myself, building new skills, and staying sharp because it really is up to you to become successful. So now I wanna share with you guys the perks that I get from working at this company. I haven't really talked about it much, but let me share with you guys. First things first we get unlimited pto and that means that i don't need to feel like i need to accrue days to get time off it's immediately given to me once i start work and i know that having this perk of unlimited pto sounds pretty attractive and it's a way for companies to you know attract talents but uh, to be honest i feel like some people don't really take advantage of this because you know they're afraid of 
you know, taking too much time off or it's not structured enough for them to really take time off. I definitely felt that myself. I didn't take time off much last year, but this year I wanted to make sure that I wanted to take adequate time off and that I'm able to, you know, really enjoy this perk and make the most out of it. Another company perk is the work-life balance culture. At least from my experience working at this company in two different teams, I felt like everyone respected each other's time off. There hasn't been a time where I couldn't leave to go run an errand or something. As long as I let my team know, they're pretty accommodating and they'll pick up the slack for me. I've seen and experienced some cultures where the work environment's pretty tense and uh, people feel like restricted to take time off or even step away from their desk. And so I'm pretty fortunate to be around this culture where I can step away from my desk and not be worried about work whenever I need to go run an errand. But overall, the culture here is not too bad, at least from my perspective, working in my two different teams, but it's definitely something I'm grateful to be a part of. And so the last perk is that we get $100 a month for our wellness, and that could be spent for gym memberships, massages, or even rental bikes. So these are a few highlighted perks. These are the ones I really resonate with and uh, take advantage of the most. I gotta finish up work, but later I'll share with you guys the personal projects that I'm working on and works out. So lately I've been trying to make the most of my evenings so let me share with you guys the state of my current project and where I'm currently at. Okay, so let me demonstrate what I have. So for those who are new here, my personal project is a Pomodoro Chrome extension. And so as you can see here, you can see that uh, the intervals and breaks, and then you can add some more intervals here to showcase your study time and your break time. And then you can also adjust, you know, how long you want your sessions to be like and your breaks. And once you click start Pomodoro session, it will give you a timer to let you know how much time you have left in your focus session or your breaks. And to be honest, I made a rigor mistake and I didn't design the application at first. I was, you know, ready to jump into development because I'm working on a new framework, Vue.js, which um, is very new to me and I have no experience in it, but I do have JavaScript experience and, you know, just the basic web development experience. And so I just thought, you know, maybe it's good for me to give it a try. Uh, I jumped in and I just started building whatever and that's a pretty big mistake because I think it's way easier if you start planning how you want your UI to look like. And so when you get to writing code, you can just code to what the UI is supposed to be. And so that you don't really spend hours at a time just designing on the spot of what the uh, UI should look like. And so right now, what I did was I created a Figma. For those who are new, Figma is basically a design tool to design mockups of what you want your website or whatever to look like. As an example here, this is a example of a landing page of a website. It shows the title, pictures that you can put here, as well as the heading and text and the footer. And so for my case, I have, you know, my app size here, which is, you know, this rectangle box. And that represents how my app is going to look like. What I need to do is actually create multiple of these to show what the user is going to click on and where they're going to go after they click on it. And so that's what I'm going to spend my time doing. I put this project in the back burner for a while now, and I really do need to get back on it. I'm pretty excited for this because I'm going to use this personally. So this is what I'm going to spend my time doing, just designing what my app should look like. Okay, so today was a pretty long day today, but I hope by sharing with you guys, you know, my work experience for the past three years gives you just a little bit of insight of how working in big tech is like. I hope it doesn't scare you away of, you know, big tech or becoming a developer, but I'm just giving you guys my insight of how it's like for me personally, and it might be a lot better for you. I'm going to call it a day today. Just relax and wind down. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.